audience wants to join in this discussion on Generation Jobless. Sheldon Neal, you've got something for us. That's right, Lauren. I'm actually here with Jennifer Barros. And um, interesting story. She actually is employed in her field of study, being philanthropy, financial studies. So first to you, Jennifer, I mean, for those who are searching to get into the field, they're probably thinking, get out. Uh, what are you even doing here? But what advice would you give to those who are trying to get to that, that dream job, what they studied for? What advice would you give? Because you, you made it, it seems. Uh, well, I guess the first thing, you have to be really positive and you have to just follow what you love, but understand in your heart that that where you start may not always be where you're going to end up. And and as long as your your passion and your will is there, you, you can do whatever you want to do. Very interesting. And I'm talking about leading to where you want to go. I'm here right next to her, actually, with uh, Joel St. John. And you had to leave Toronto to go to Calgary to live with your uncle um, where you weren't able to find a job here uh, in your field of studies being business marketing. But how hard was it for you to make that decision, come to grips, if you will, saying, I got to leave my home here and leave? How hard was that? Um, it was extremely hard. Um, as I said, like, everyone I know, family, everyone's here. I only just had my uncle out there. So it was a total change of scenery, total change of mindset, attitude that I had to go there with. Um, my uncle does a, uh, he has his own business, so it's, the hours are a lot longer, so there's a lot of things I had to deal with in myself, and um, I think that's one t thing we need to really focus on is that in this job market, new skills are required, and a lot more balance of being a human being is required. You know, um, I'm thankful that I'm gifted in music, so I was able to jump into that. Um, yes, this may not be the, uh, I guess, most lucrative. The, the, the most moment. lucrative or, the, moment, or yeah. uh, the happiest thing for my parents because they're like, oh, do doctor, lawyer, nah, you know, like it's, <laughs> it's, it's a harder thing. But I'm glad I really was able to refocus. It's funny. I went away to come back in a better mindset. Mm -hmm. So God had it all in control. So. Sound words back to you, Lorna. All right. Our next guest, Dr. Steve Garber, has been a mentor to hundreds of students and job seekers over the course of his career. He's been a teacher, a writer, a speaker, and he's also the author of Visions of Vocation, Common Grace for the Common Good. Let's hope he's got a little guru hope in him tonight. Welcome, Dr. Steve Garber, to Context. Thank you, Steve. Great to have you. Thank you here. Okay, so is it a mistake for these kids to go off to school, get a great training and degree, and uh, expect that there should be a job there? They're not expect, they're looking, they're working hard. Give, give us a word about expectations. I think it is a mistake, actually. Um, I don't think that usually happens for most anybody, really. Uh, I think that uh, I've often thought about it as the realpolitik of the marketplace, actually where you may have dreamed about, I want to do this, I've studied this, I, my life will be satisfied if I do this. And then of course you move from you know, the university you're in to the big city and you look and you look and you meet you know, a world which says, maybe you could get a job, but finding a job you really love, a, a sense of vocation in your work, is a lot harder to do that. So we are wired then to say, I want a job I love, I want a career, I want to make a difference in this world? I think we're wired as human beings. I think it's in our deepest DNA, actually. But that's not reality. Real politic, as you call it. So how do you cope with that hope and that great disconnect of the cold reality? Yeah. I don't think anybody in the world, actually, puts all that together with complete coherence. I think it's a fiction to imagine that anybody does. So you should just accept the fact you're going to probably have a couple lousy jobs. A couple lousy jobs, but you'll have jobs for the rest of your life, which in some ways are not all that you really want to be about in your life. Um, I make a distinction between what I would call occupation and vocation. Occupation is what we do day by day to keep ourselves going and alive. And you know, it's the stuff of life for us. It's working at a particular place with particular people. Vocation is the deeper, longer story of somebody's life. This is what I was made to do and really want to do. And never for anybody are those completely the same circles. Wow. I thought occupation was supposed to try to get to that, this is what I'm really meant to do as much as possible. Fancy thinking. I think in thinking. some ways it's fan fantasy 
But I would say our deepest longing is to move that direction, Larna. So, I mean, I think that we want to do that. I think we ought to expect to do that. So you, you heard the frustration of these kids looking for work. What advice would you give them then about not letting their dreams slip away inch by inch, yeah. but still moving towards, this is what I'm made to do? I think that people are, are going to have to find their way slowly into what is what they really think I was made to do and built to do and want to do and created to do. Uh, I don't think that, that people typically, when they become 22 and leave with a degree, find themselves immediately stepping into, and this is what I was always wanted to do with my life, actually. I think that you do enter into the job market, and you try something, and you try something else, and try something else. And I think that for most people, it takes probably five or 10 years to make your way into something where you begin to think, this is more who I imagine myself being. And what do you do with the discontent in the meantime? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with who you hang out with, actually, um, who your people are, who, what your community is, is like. Um, I think that it's awfully hard to do that by yourself. So I think making good choices about, you know, my best friends, my close friends, my, my community that I, I live my life, life out among is probably one of the most crucial parts of those 20-something years. Because if you choose wrong there, you will find yourself increasingly isolated. And it's increasingly hard, actually, to make sense of this movement towards something which matters more to you. So give us some practical advice for that. You're saw that coach full of great talented kids a year and a half of looking a nurse not finding yeah. a job someone retraining after 10 years mm -hmm. where do they start i live in washington dc and it's a city that runs by interns maybe toronto's like that too i don't know really but well, it's in a my city, controversy here yeah it's my city it's actually literally run by interns you'd be surprised maybe not surprised given how much of a mess we're in but you would be surprised how much is run by 25 year olds wow um, uh, but I think that, you know, as I've watched for the, all the years of my life, teaching life, really, I've watched people come into Washington at age 20, 21, 22, 23, with a hope to somehow, as I would put it, put their shoulder to history to change the way the world turns out. Um, and I think that when people find their way into longer work that they think is what they want to do, it's because they've been willing to work at internships which give them an experience for four months, for six months, for longer than that. And somebody gets a, ch a chance to say, you are good at that, aren't you? I see that about you. So you're all in favor of working for free for a while? Some Try internships to get... are free. Some internships get paid, actually. They're kind of depends on where you are. OK, so that's one piece of advice. I think another Do piece it... of advice would be that um, you need to be patient about it and not expect that somehow, you know, even though I worked hard and did all my best study and, you know, did the all that I was asked to do in my undergraduate years that somehow I deserve now to have the job which you know I was always planning to have now at age 22, 23. All right, Sheldon. And now it's time to ask a question for you at home. We want to know, can a job and a career you love be two different things? In other words, might your life's work, the thing you've been called to do, be something you're not being paid to do? For instance, it was Clark Kent's vocation to save the world, but he made his living writing for the Daily Planet. So what do you think? Please send us your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter. Okay, coming up, we're gonna keep Steve Garber on the couch with some potentially life-changing insights on the purpose of work, vocation, and fulfillment. Generation Jobless, stay with us.